Hi everyone, I'm Partho. I'm an SI leader at the ARC. And today we're going to be talking about electrophilic aromatic substitution. So let's get this bread. So electrophilic aromatic substitution is similar to what we've learned in 8A, that it is a uh, reaction between an electrophile and a nucleophile. Some common ones you're going to be seeing in this class include the, if you take an aromatic ring, this, uh, we have uh, benzene here. If you react it with bromine and FeBr3, you get a Br right here. A second example is another benzene ring. Even if you react it with uh, HNO3, which is nitric acid, with H2SO4, sulfuric acid, you get a nitrate group on it. Another example you're going to be seeing, very common as well, is if you take a benzene ring, react it with any acyl chloride in the presence of aluminum trichloride, you substitute the H here with the acyl group. And fourth and final example is, again, benzene ring with SO3 and sulfuric acid again in order to get SO3H on this position. So as you can see, there are these are very these will be very common in 8B, and some patterns include you need a reagent with the uh, presence of a Lewis either Lewis acid or regular acid. So the most common acid Lewis acid you're going to see is FeBr3 and AlCl3. These are the Lewis acid, and H2SO4, the sulfuric acid, is also one of the more common ones. Now I'm going to be showing you how to get from here to here in stepwise mechanism step. So the mechanism for this type of reaction is very uh, stepwise. And if you could find a pattern, so you have your benzene ring, which is an aromatic ring. As, and as you may have learned from 8A that Benz, anything with lots of electron is called a nucleophile, so this is going to be your nucleophile. And your electrophile are represent as E+. Plus. What happens is the electrons, as you know, go from where the electron is to the, where the electron isn't. So you draw an arrow. After that, now you have lost that electron right there. And you have put that E right here. And now this position has a positive charge in it as a result of losing the electron. And that hydrogen is still there. And in the second step, what happens is any, anything in the reaction, any sort of base or acid minus, deprotonates that. And you get back your aromaticity, which is highly favorable. So this is the general scheme that these type of reactions are going to follow. Going back to our first example, How would this work with Br2 and FeBr3? So what happens is Br, uh, FeBr3 is a Lewis acid, so it's a, it accepts electrons. And you have Br2 here with lone pairs. And here's the Lewis acid. It wants that electron. so. Then you get this intermediate. With the minus charge on the iron and plus charge on the Br. So now what you have done is made this into the electrophile. This right here. This part is going to be your leaving group, as you've seen in 8A. And you're going to be substituting this atom to the ring. So we're going to be doing the next step. So we have the Lewis acid that just accepted an extra pair of electron here, minus charge, plus charge. So this is the, it's a really good leaving group, so which makes this 
a good electrophile. So you have your benzene ring. What happens is this electrons on the ring attacks the Br and displaces this whole leaving group. So that just leaves and you get to this intermediate. And there's a plus charge here. So this as it drawn is not so favorable because it's a positive charge on a, on a ring. So what happens is it wants to gain back the aromaticity. You want, it wants to go here. So you have this in the reaction. Anything could protonate. Anything with a lone pair in the reaction because this is so favorable. From there, you get back the aromaticity and you get your final product with bromine in it. So for the third, uh, for the second mechanism, I have the benzene ring that re reacts with the nitric acid and sulfuric acid to give you an NO2 group on the ring. So this one is pretty unconventional and it's kind of counterintuitive, the mechanism, the way it works. So you have the nitric acid. And you have H2SO4, the sulfuric acid, which I'm going to represent as HA. So most of the time, what you think that this negative charge would pull the proton off to become positive, favorable. However, that does happen 99% of the time. However, that 1% of the time, what's going to happen is this OH group is going to pluck the proton off from the acid to give you this intermediate. And this is probably the only time in organic chemistry you're going to see two positive charges next to each other. It's usually really bad, and you don't want to see it. But in this case, it's an exception. So what happens is now you just made this OH2 into a really good leaving group. So these electrons could come down and push up the water. And you get this super duper nucleophilic nitronium ion. It's so nucleophilic that if your mama crawled into this reaction, it would nitrate your mama. So you have this super electrophile, the nitro nitronium ion. The reason it's super electrophilic is because that nitrogen, the charges are being ripped apart by the two oxygen withdrawing group. And you have your nucleophile, which is again going to be the benzene ring. What happens if any of these electron attacks the nitrogen and you push out the nitrogen oxygen bond to give you Again, the common intermediate. And last step, as always, anything, either it's your uh, conjugated acid or the base, come in and you get to your final product.